Okay, here we are uh, back for our next installment of the tutorials related to ITL 207, the networking class. Basically what we'll do today is we'll introduce Pajek. Okay, and I'll go right to the software now. One of the things that you'll notice immediately is that this software is set up very differently from most of the other software that we've seen. Most of the other software that we've seen has been basically very similar to any other integrated development environment, meaning you have a very robust visual environment that helps you to understand the data and visualize it in an interactive way. Pagic is not set up that way. And so what I want to do in the first installment is basically just walk you through why Pagic is set up this way so that you can understand it. If you compare Pagic to other uh, integrated development environments that we've used, you'll be very disappointed. But if you look at it from the right point of view, if you use the right model to understand it, you'll actually be um, quite impressed with what it can do. Pagic is actually set up to work more like a scientific calculator. Okay, and I'll pull up the little scientific calculator in Windows just to give you a sense of, of what I'm talking about. Um, if you've seen anybody use it, a calculator who really, really knows what they're doing, they can perform a lot of very complicated calculations fairly quickly. The reason they can do that is because you can have uh, separate memory cells that will store things for you. You can actually add and subtract things directly in those memory cells. Okay, So if you look at the MC, the MR, the MS button, and so on, this stands for memory clear, memory uh, retrieve, memory save, and then add to what's in memory and subtract to what's in memory. So let's say that I wanted to do a lot of uh, calculations with 10, right? I could say 10 and say um, something like uh, memory save, right? And then if I take uh, 6 and I add it to what's in memory, right? And then in theory, I should be able to say memory recall, and it'll say 10 plus 6 is 16. Okay, so the idea is that the calculator, if you use it, correctly actually has this sort of separate memory area so I can store intermediate types of, of values and things that I may want for calculations further down the road. This is actually exactly how Pagic was set up. It it's actually says this in its manual, which you should have in your student disks. And the idea is that instead of having sort of an interactive environment where you sort of explore something visually, although it has visual capabilities, which are quite nice, the idea of Pagic is quite different, that it functions as a calculator for making calculations on network objects, okay? And the network objects that Pagic cares about are networks, okay? And that's the .NET format that we've, we've already worked with and we've already looked at. Partitions, okay, partitions are stored in a .clu file, and basically a partition is a classification of the vertices in the network such that each vertex is assigned to only one class, okay, and we'll see some examples of this, but basically this is just a way to classify the nodes in the network. A vector, uh, which is stored in a file that's uh, labeled .vec, okay, has the extension .vec. Um, a vector is basically just um, an object that assigns numerical values to each vertex in the network. Okay, so what you'll actually see is a list of numbers. Okay, and each row core, each row in that file corresponds to one value that's connected with a node, okay, a node of that value. Right? Permutations actually tell you about, they'll actually let you organize the nodes in different orders, okay, different sequences. A cluster is just one particular grouping of, of nodes that is of interest to you, okay, so one, one cluster, right? one group of nodes. And a hierarchy is actually a um, data object for classifying vertices if a vertex may belong to several classes at the same time, okay? Um, for those of you familiar with 
uh, hierarchical clustering. The idea is that you may actually belong to several different groups at the same time. Okay, so this is something that a partition can't do. In that case, you would want to store that data as, as a hierarchy. For today, we'll be focusing mostly on networks, partitions, and vectors. But over the course of time, as we develop um, more skill, we'll use permutations, clusters, and hierarchies as well to help us answer these questions. Basically, what we would do from here is to actually start to see how this functions as a calculator. And one thing to keep in mind, each of these menu items, or almost all of these menu items, relate directly to one of the objects that Paget can handle. So for example, if you want to perform a function on a specific network, you would click net. If you want to perform a function on more than one network, okay, and you can sort of do that by coming here, you would actually click on nets. Okay, these are things that you need at least two networks to make calculations on. You can do the same for partition and partitions and vector and vectors and permutations and so on and so forth all down the line. So these these menu items all relate directly to the objects that you have. Okay. Moreover, suppose you want to do something that uh, to calculate some type of um, object or calculate some type of value that requires more than one kind of object. So it requires both a network and a partition to make this happen. That's where you would use operations. Okay, and operations are things that require lots of different objects to to work. We'll use lots of these things and you'll see examples of this, but I wanted to explain this in sort of an abstract way so you understood why Paget worked this way. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, just the way the calculator has uh, a place where it can keep running totals of things, these are drop-down boxes that will record every intermediate network and step that you have along the way. So if you make a mistake or if you ever want to go back, you can always look through that list at all of the networks that you've used in that session. All right, so this is just a general orientation in the next section we will actually uh, use these things. In particular, we'll use networks, partitions, and vectors. And you'll get to see what this looks like um, uh, with real data.